Welcome back, mathletes. So we have our next couple of lessons. We're going to combine these together since they all represent measures of data or data measures, way that we can measure data. So when we're looking at um, statistics or any type of survey results, all of that information is our data. We have four different ways to measure data. They include mean, median, mode, and range. We're going to define each of those so we can figure out which is which and how we find that value um, when looking at a set of data. So the first data measure is mean. What is mean? How do we find it or calculate it? Take a peek at the top of textbook page 212 for information. We'll pause the video while you look to learn. So you'd see that mean represents average. And when we're talking about mean, it says it's the sum, which means you've added. And then you divide. And this is really more how it's calculated. It's an add, divide idea. But mean actually just represents average. And so when we're finding like the class average on a test, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the balance. What's like a normal score so that you can compare how you did to how your classmates did as well. Be ready to take some notes here on your handout. I'm going to fill in the blanks. Mean is the average of a set of data. It is the most um, kind of a normal score or normal value. We calculate the mean or the average by adding, this is where that sum idea comes in, all the data together. Then we divide by the number of data values in the set. So if I had um, a lot of years on my age and you had a little bit of years on your age, we could average our ages by adding our ages together. And since there's two people, divide by two. What that will do is find the age that is kind of normal between you and I. So we would find it's probably like 25, maybe 30-ish years is normal um, because my score or my age is much higher than yours. It balances it out. When we have a test average, if I had um, two student test scores and one scored a 100 and one scored an 80, the average is a 90. The way we find that is kind of by taking your score, um, the high score, and then the um, lower score, adding them together to have a total point value, and then splitting it between the two people evenly. That doesn't mean when I find the class average, I'm giving anybody's points to other students. It just means that's how the normal is calculated. So I'm going to walk you through this example, copy it onto your handout as well. We need to add all of these PMT scores together. Calculator makes this happen a little bit faster. So I find that the total ends up being 28. So if I had these seven scores, there are 28 points earned on these seven tests. But now to find the average, I need to divide. And I'm going to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because there were seven pieces of PMT score data. 28 divided by 7 is 4. So the normal or the average PMT score is a 4. Now we can look. One kid was normal. Two kids were normal. Three kids were normal. A couple of kids were above average and a couple of kids are below average. So we can see that it's very normal to be about a plus four. If we added another kid's data in here, then we would need to change our divide by seven into a divide by eight and add the points to the total and then divide again. So if an absent kid came back, took the PMT, we would just need to recalculate our figures. So average means, or mean means average, and then we calculate by putting all the totals together and then dividing it between them um, so it's kind of balanced. If we take a peek here, we see that 
your practice is to figure out, do you get enough sleep? And what's normal sleep? Well, the first thing to do is to calculate how many hours you personally slept last night. You can even use like a 0.5 if you slept for like a half hour extra. Then you're going to find your group's mean of sleep in hours. How many hours was normal or average? So you'll do that by adding up all your sleep time together and then dividing it by the people that were in the group. So if your table has three members, you'll be dividing your total by three. If your table has four people, you'll be dividing by four. If it's just you and your partner, you're going to add up your two hour or your, your two values of sleep hours and then divide it by the two. And then we'll give you a chance to record um, your value on the chart here. So let's see if what you sleep or what's normal in our class meets the requirement. This is a chart that kind of recommends the sleep that is really needed and needed to function at best um, optimal levels. So the human body truly does need certain things in life for survival, things like shelter, water, food, you know, nutrients, sunshine, but we also need rest. Our body needs to rest. When we lack sleep, that's when um, our brain is maybe foggy, we function at a lower level, um, maybe our coordination is off, our focus is off. So sleep is super important. You can see based on here, the age ranges varies, and each different spot ends up needing different amounts of sleep. So they even graph the information down below as well. So you can see that, you know, brand new babies sleep all the time because their body is growing and that's a lot of work. So they have to rest a lot to recover. Once you get to this adult range, you need a lot less sleep to function, but it's still quite a bit. So between seven and nine hours is really what you need. But if you are only averaging five hours of sleep as an adult because life is busy and you have so much to do, you can see that you're below the average of where you're supposed to be, which is maybe why you need more coffee on certain days than others. So if you are in this five to 12 year old range here, it is normal to sleep about 10 to 11 hours. Not normal to sleep, it's just what your body needs. So I'm guessing that most of you are well below what is expected of you because on average, you probably don't sleep anywhere close to what they recommend your body actually needs. Our next data measure is median. We're going to use our key idea on textbook page 218 to figure out what's median and then how do we find that data measure. We'll pause the video while you look to learn. So here um, on our textbook, it tells us that median is the middle. So when we're talking about median, we're talking about the data value in the middle. When we have two middle numbers, it is the average or mean of those two middle numbers. So if we had people line up in order by height, we can see that the value in the middle would be this medium-sized person. But if we had four people, and there's really not a middle um, number, then we would average these two people's heights together and find a good balance between those two. So to calculate this, our values first need to be in order. If they're not in order and they're all random, then how will we know what's in the middle? So if we needed you to line up by age, we would have to compare our ages and get you in order, youngest to oldest. If we were doing height like this example here, the people need to be in order by height. And then we just kind of go back and forth to, until we find smack dab the number in the center. So jot this on your handout so you can remember this data measure. Median represents our middle. So on a highway or on a road, that little line is your median. And what you don't want to do is cross over that middle line because then you're in the oncoming traffic um, range. So this is called the median of the road. And the median of the data is just the value in the middle. We calculate it by ordering our values from least to greatest. 
our numbers have to be in order. Then we kind of mark off um, high value and low value until we find the middle or the center. So if I have these PMT scores once again, this time I'm not just going to add them together and divide it by seven because I'm looking to find a different way to measure the data. I'm trying to find the middle of the data. So I need to put these pieces in order, starting with the lowest, which is two, then three, then there's a couple of fours, then there's a five, and then there's a six. So now to find the median, I'm going to go back and forth between these. I'm going to eliminate the high and low score, eliminate these two on the ends, eliminate the next two on the ends until I find the number smack dab in the center. The median or middle score here is a four. If there happened to be um, two values in the middle, let's say another kid showed up and they scored a one. To recalculate this, now that I have another piece of data, we're going to cross off the one as the low, the six as the high, the two as the low, the five as the high, the three as the low, the four as the high, and then I'm looking to find the middle between a four and a four. Well, the number between a four and a four is a four. If we had a number like between a two and a four, the middle would be a three. Sometimes we might have something like the number between a two and a three, and in that situation, it's a 2.5. So we would average these two out. So four plus four is eight. Eight divided by two is four. The median would be a four. Median is middle. Put them in order, then find the number in the middle. We'll pause the video while you try to find the median of this set of data. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you put them in order from least to greatest. Now that we have them in order, let's find the middle. So it's not the little guy and it's not the big guy. It's not the next little and it's not the next big. Since there's one number left in the middle, this becomes our median. So our median is 7.2 for this set of data. How'd you do? Were you able to put them in order and then locate the value that ended up being in the middle? Here's that tip again. If we have two numbers in the middle or an even amount of data, find the average of those two median values. So we'll pause the video while you try this set of data because it has an even amount. You're going to have to find the middle of two middles. So I put them in order because we always want to start by putting them in order when we're finding the median measure of data. And now we're going to work left to right crossing off the extremes, taking care of the ones on the outside, which are definitely not in the middle. But when I get to the center portion of my data, I find a five and a seven. So we're gonna find the average of those two numbers. Sometimes you can just figure out what's between a five and a seven and know it's a six in there. Sometimes we just have to add them together. Seven plus five is 12, and then 12 divided by those two pieces of data is still a six. So the median of this data would be a six is in the middle. How'd you do? Were you able to work with an even amount of data and still find the middle? Our next data measure involves mode. We're going to use textbook page 218 to figure out what in the world does mode mean when we're looking at measuring data and how is this one calculated? We'll pause the video while you look to learn. So our textbook resource tells us that mode is the value or values that occur most. It's kind of like the most popular one. So it's the number that you see the most. So if we went around the classroom and asked, what's your age, um, and everybody gave their data, it would be the age that we heard the most. So we would probably hear 11, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 11, and it would be whatever age happened the most. So sometimes data can have one mode, if there's only one number repeated the most, Sometimes it can be more than one mode in case of a tie, and sometimes there isn't a number repeated at all. And in that situation, it would be called no mode or none. We don't want to call our mode zero because zero is a digit. 
although it has no value. Zero mode means that the number zero was repeated the most. So if I asked you, um, how many um, airplane trips have you been on? And a lot of people said zero. Or how many times have you been to the moon? And everybody's like, uh, zero, 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 zero. I haven't been to the moon ever. Um, then the mode would be zero. But when we don't have a value repeated because everybody's data is different, then we call it no mode. So they show an example. 15 was repeated. And 24 was repeated, and because they were both repeated the same amount of times, there are two modes. They are 15 and 24. Let's jot this on your handout. So our notes for mode are here. Mode is the most common or most repeated value in a set of data. It's the one we see the most of. We calculate it by finding the value in the data that repeats the most. So mode is most. There can be no mode, one mode, or there can be two or more modes. When I look at the PMT scores here, I see the four repeats. And since it repeats the most and all the other ones don't repeat three times, the mode on this PMT data is a four. It's the most popular score earned by students in the class. Make sure you have all this information on your notes or your handout for the data measure of mode. That will give you a chance to try and find the mode here. Use this graph to find the mode age of little league players. We'll pause the video while you look. When our data is graphed, it helps us to find the mode because we're looking for the one that is the most. And I know that the higher the bar, the more it is. So because the age of 12 is the highest, it tells me that there are mostly 12-year-olds in this little league program. Way more 12-year-olds than 11 or 10. How'd you do? Were you able to find the mode in this set of data? Here's your next one to try. We want to find the mode of the talent show acts. So these are all the different activities that people are doing in this talent show. There's a tip here. Make a frequency table to tally the data. Or you can count how many are doing singing, how many are doing juggling. Which of these activities do you find the most in the talent show? We'll pause the video while you look. So if we look through the information here, singing occurs more than any of the other activities. Although some of the other ones have multiple people performing, um, like dancing, singing has seven participants and that would be the most. So the mode in this talent show is singing because seven of them, uh, or seven of the people, are will be singing. How'd you do on that? Were you able to find the mode? Our fourth and final data measure is called range. We'll use the middle of textbook page 219 to calculate our range and to figure out what in the world is it. We'll pause the video while you look. So when we're thinking about the word range, like a mountain range, the range is the difference between the greatest and the least. So from the very tippy top of this mountain all the way down to the very bottom of this mountain, this is the range between them. It's kind of like the space or the gap between them. So if we're talking about values in a set of data, it's the difference between the high and the low. We could do the range in the temperature, what was today's high, what was today's low, how many degrees apart are they? And because it has the word difference, it's calculated by subtracting. Take your biggest value and subtract your smallest value, and then you'll find the range or the space between them. We could calculate our age ranges by taking my big range and your tiny age range and finding the gap or the space between them. How many numbers apart are we? Let's jot this down on your handout for today. 
So when we're looking at the word range as a data measure, we are talking about the difference between the highest or greatest or largest or biggest and lowest or smallest or least values in a set of data. We calculate this by subtracting. If you take your greatest number and take away your least number, you'll find the range between those values. So when I'm looking at the PMT score here, I see that the greatest number is six, and the smallest score is two, and six take away two is four, which means the kid who did the best in the class is four points higher than the kid who did the worst on this PMT. They are four points apart, so the range is four. Let's try it. Let's find the range of the age of people in our math class. We'll take a moment to discuss this. So you can see that when you're using my age in there as well, the range becomes much farther apart in age. Take a moment here and see if you can find and fix my error. I was told to calculate the range, so I showed you my values, but something happened. What was it? You can see that when I went, um, I took 63 and a 51. The problem is my, my information is not in order. So although 63 is the greatest, 51 is not the least in value. Really, the smallest here is 49. So I should have done 63 take away 49 instead. So when you're looking for range, we have to focus on the biggest score and the smallest score only. All the rest of them don't really have any um, value in finding range. There's no purpose. Now we're going to talk about what's called measures of central tendency. And that's a pretty big phrase. The top of textbook, page 218, describes it a little bit. tells us that a measure of central tendency is any data measure that represents the center of a data set. It means that it includes all the data, the littles, the bigs, and everything in between. So when all the data is used, uses all data, we call it a way to measure central tendency. Mean is one, and the other two are median and mode. Mean uses all the numbers, the littles, the bigs, and everything in between. Median focuses on littles, bigs, and everything in between. Mode, you, you look at all the numbers, not just the littles, not just the bigs. You include everything. The one data measure that does not measure central tendency is range because range specifically ignores the stuff in the middle. It only looks over there at the small and over there at the big, and all the stuff in the middle, it pretends like it's not even there. Jot this down on your handout. We have three measures of central tendency. The way I remember them, they're the three Ms. So when we measure our data, and we wanna pay attention to the center stuff too, mean will do that, Median does that, and so does mode. The one that does not is range, the one that doesn't start with an M, because it ignores the stuff in the center. It just looks left and right. So now you're going to practice finding these data measures, mean, median, mode, range. Uh, use your notes to help remember which one is which and how each of them is calculated slightly differently from the rest of them. Happy practicing!